Welcome to the Character Creator Shoes Creation Tutorial. In this video, I'll guide you through the process of making Character Creator compatible shoes with some third-party 3D applications. I'll be creating high heels to demonstrate a rather difficult scenario, where the foot needs to be posed and contact points modified, while the mesh needs to be hidden and adjusted to prevent mesh penetration. For this project, I'll be using Maya for modeling, ZBrush for sculpting and projection, Photoshop for texture creation, and of course Character Creator for the start and end of this round trip process. First, let's take a look at some of the references I have gathered. Because I want to model high heels from imagination, I have collected several resources that I can piece together to create something unique. For example, I like the narrow tip of this shoe, the front laces and flap on this one, and the laces on the back of this one. In order to make this lace work with the front laces, I'll need to wrap them around to the front and do a lace down like so. Inside Character Creator, I'll go to File Export to FBX Avatar. This will be used for rigging and reference inside Maya. And we'll just need the rig character so I won't include calibration motion. You only really need calibration motion when you are making deformable clothing. Now inside Maya, I'll go to File Import to bring in the character template. Since we are making high heels, I'll need to angle the feet downwards and its toes upwards as if it's wearing an invisible pair of high heels. And this is the starting point for modeling the high heels. Now, let's skip forward to where the high heel models are complete. The actual modeling process is outside the scope of this tutorial. If you wish to learn about modeling, you can look at many resources that already exist online. And please feel free to use whatever modeling software that suits you. Character Creator is third-party agnostic. There are no special preferences when it comes to compatibility with other software. Now let's take a look at this model with a pattern texture. As you can see, UV seams are carefully chosen to allow for better UV fitting. And when we take a look at the UV editor, we can see that it's all laid out nice and clean, with one side stacked on the other, taking advantage of the texture mirroring. Now, I'll select the shoes mesh and go to File, Export Selection, Options, and export an OBJ file for sculpting inside ZBrush. Now that's done, I'll have to bind the shoes to the skeleton by going to Skin, Bind Skin Options. Here, I want to make sure to bind to the entire joint hierarchy and maximize the bone influence. Next, I'll need to adjust the weighting of the skin bind. So I'll just select the body and then the high heels and go to Skin, Copy Skin Weights, Options. Make sure that the influence association is set to name and surface association set to closest point on surface. This is the fastest and most accurate way i found to modify the skin weights. Hopefully your modeling software of choice has comparable tool sets. Now I'll just select all of the meshes along with the skeleton and go to File Export Selection Options and export an FBX file for Character Creator. Inside ZBrush, I'll go to Tool Import to read the OBJ we just exported earlier. Then I'll subdivide the mesh several times under Tool Geometry. And it's really that simple to set up the model for sculpting inside ZBrush. Let's fast forward to where the high heel sculpt is complete. The actual sculpting process will not be covered in this tutorial. There are many resources online if you are interested in learning high density sculpting. Notice how the laces, seams, and stitching are meticulously created. 
Now I'll hide one of the shoes to focus on the texture generation process. I'll need to first cut the subdivision down to its lowest. For the normal map, I'll first generate it in tangent space and clone it as texture. Because ZBrush is vertically inverted, I'll need to activate Flip V under Texture menu and export this map out in PNG format. Next, I'll generate the displacement map and clone it as Alpha. I'll also flip V on this map, this time under the Alpha menu. I'll be relying on this map to create the ambient occlusion later inside Photoshop. Next up is the World Space Normal Map, which is needed by the Character Creator Appearance Editor. We do this by accessing the same normal map settings, except this time disabling the Tangent option. Same thing, we'll flip V before exporting this texture. Now the displacement map is really not enough for ambient occlusion. I like to combine it with ZBrush generated AO map or even the cavity map. You can generate the AO and cavity map by first increasing the subdivision levels. However, I usually do not go up to the highest subdivision because it can take way too long to generate. And next, we'll need to go to masking, mask ambient occlusion. Notice also that there is the Mask by Cavity option underneath as well. For now, I'll just demonstrate generating the AO map. Once I have all these maps, I usually play around with the blend settings like Multiply and Overlay inside Photoshop. Also, I like to adjust the levels of the contribution and contrast ratio to get a good AO map. Now, let's take a look at all the maps after modification inside Photoshop. First, we have the standard tangent normal map. Next is the world space normal map. The ambient occlusion map is created by combining cavity, AO, and displacement maps. And the color mask is used to separate the shoes into different multiple materials. I draw this map by hand inside Photoshop based on the world space normal map. Now that I have all the textures ready, I'll open up CC and import the FBX file we exported earlier by dragging the file into the viewport. In the first Create Asset window, I'll also drop in the FBX key file that was generated inside the same folder. And the new template file can be left as default because that was what was used during the export. In the next message window, I'll leave the shoes as layer one since there were no warnings or errors, the shoes will come in without a hitch, except for the fact that the shoes sink into the floor. I can easily fix this by adjusting the contact points under the Modify menu, and move these green boxes around to align with the toes, balls, and heels of the shoes, which will also move the entire body and the shoes out onto the floor. Next, I'll need to adjust the material settings. Be aware that Character Creator defaults the diffuse strength to 80% on import. We'll need to crank that back to 100% to get the full vibrancy of the diffuse map. I'll also need to make sure the diffuse, ambient, and specular colors are within reason, as well as the specular and glossiness settings both of which needs to be experimented with to get the right looking results. Let's get rid of the checker pattern test map by going to Activate Appearance Editor. A warning message will appear to tell you that any active Appearance Editor settings will flatten down. This is normal as Appearance Editor overwrites the original textures. Now's the time to increase the resolution on the shoes so we can see what we're doing and bring in the input maps we made inside Photoshop such as Normal, RGB Mask, AO, and World Space Normal Maps.
By default, the appearance editor has some really ugly material combinations. So we'll have to adjust each material dictated by the RGB mask one by one. We do this by going to the corresponding color sections and applying different material types, such as turning the shoes to leather and adjusting the diffuse HSL settings. HSL stands for Hue, Saturation, and Lightness. With these three settings, one can virtually derive any RGB color. Now, I'm adjusting the soles of the shoes to a plastic rubber material and make it much darker color. Next up are the two sides of the shoes, which I'll leave as leather but adjust the HSL to a lighter brown. For the shoelaces, I'll leave the material as wool and give it a very dark color. And finally, for the shoelace ends, I'll set the material to plastic and also a dark color. Now that's done, I'll readjust the specular and glossiness settings to fit the new color scheme. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Moving on. So the obvious issues are the skin penetrations through the shoes. So I'll be using Character Creator's Auto High Mesh feature by first activating Edit Mesh Component. Keep in mind that this feature is still in development, so the interface and its operation may be different for you. Make sure the body part is set to foot and select the part that penetrates the shoes. Then we need to select the faces of the shoes that cover the area as well. I can add to the selection by pressing Ctrl key and remove from selection by pressing Shift and Ctrl. Now press the Assign to Group button to hide the corresponding body part group. Next up is the ankle area. So I have to switch to the leg body part because the ankle is part of that grouping. Now I'm walking down the list selecting one by one until I hit the specific area of the ankle. Another problem surfaces because the body part area is rather large and it encompasses areas that exceed the shoes. Auto hind mesh is a no-go because assigning the group will create an invisible band around the shoes. So I'll just cut to another body part to clear out the red hide mesh grouping. I'll also enable soft selection to enable fall off editing. Let's reduce the fall off radius to something manageable. and simply pull out the offending intersections. Now the front is looking pretty good, but We'll need to make sure the shoe looks good all around. On the back of the ankle is another penetration, which I'll use the same exact method to fix. So that's looking pretty good. Let's fast forward to where both sides are corrected and save these shoes out by browsing under the content panel. Under Clothing, Shoes, Custom, 
Press the plus button and give it an appropriate name. Now I'll clear the scene by going to File, New Project. Then I'll double click on the high heels to apply it to the default female character. We can test the shoes out by applying some poses under the calibration menu. And that's it! Thanks for watching this shoes creation tutorial. Please check out our other tutorials under the Character Creator Content Creation family.